in its core is pattern recognition in large text-based corpuses of data. But most importantly, it was made for us. It was made for us SEOs to use. But the problem that we professionals face <laughs> remains the same. We are not using these models. So why don't we try an ML-based solution? In a nutshell, this video will show you how to crawl and export the content on your website, how to upload your files to the web app and fine tune the model's performance, um, and also downloading the files and exploring them and building these files into your deliverable of the internal linking audit. Content clusters and SEOs are typically seen like this. You have uh, the content that is clustered that can be in different formats. You have the internal links or hyperlinks that link to a pillar page. But content clusters in machine learning are typically referred to as topic models, and they are a little bit different. Now, the fundamentals are absolutely the same. The old way of presenting a page was to have it as a standalone page and rely on backlinks to this page in order to signal its importance. And the new way is to put this page in the content context of other existing content on your website. So let's think about how did topic modeling come about in order to assess its relevance. According to the author of the first topic modeling algorithm, there was a problem. As collective knowledge increases, discovery of information gets more and more difficult. The solution, in his opinion, was that computational tools can be implemented to help organize, search, and understand these vast amounts of information. Another problem he saw is that the current systems of query and links are good, but they can be very limiting. And the solution, in his opinion, was that we need systems to organize documents based on themes or otherwise topics and subtopics. The final problem he saw is that there is no ability to zoom in and out of topics of interest and to highlight patterns within these topics. And the solution, he thought, was that we need topic models that operate under the assumption that a document has multiple subtopics within it. And this is how the first topic modeling algorithm was born. That is called LDA. Now, the idea behind LDA is that you have different words that can stand as descriptors for a particular topic. And the algorithm actually calculates the probability of each word in this document aligning to one of the main core topics that the algorithm identifies. And what this allows is someone like us coming in and looking at these different words that describe a particular subtopic in a document and giving them names, like what do they mean? What do these terms represent? What is the name of this topic? And then seeing how often are these different subtopics represented as part of the given document. So let's start with step one, crawling your website. For the purposes of the demonstration I've chosen this website, what you'd like to do is go to the blog or any resource search section, inspect the code of the page, and copy the selector or XPath of the element that contains all of the copy on this page. The most beginner-friendly way to extract the content of your website is using a crawler like Screaming Frog and using its custom extraction feature, um, giving it uh, the parameter of the XPath or custom selector that you just copied from the website. When the crawl is completed, export your file as a CSV or Google Sheet. Then navigate to the LDA web-based no-code app of Cornell and upload your two files, the custom export um, that you did of the website and a list of English stop words that you'd like to use. Once you have your files uploaded, you can custom select the number of topics that you would like and you can also select how many iterations of the model that you would like to run. Try to experiment with the number of topics and the number of iterations that you're going to run. The size of your dataset will greatly influence how accurate the results are going to be each experiment that you run. Be wary with how many iterations you run, because running too many might mean that you are pushing the algorithm to overfit your data. Another cool feature of the web app is that you can actually fine-tune the list of stop words uh, and the list of words that are included in the topic models. So uh, coming here in the vocabulary um, might allow you to actually filter specific stop words of your site. So those might be things like the brand name, those might be things like author names or anything else that you might find relevant uh, to exclude from the topic models created. When you click on topic documents, you can see the documents uh, that are sorted based by their proportion of the currently selected topic on the left-hand side, and the algorithm is biased to prefer longer documents, so longer pages of your website will perform better in terms of how they are classified as opposed to shorter ones. 
Another cool thing is that if you click on the topic correlations uh, section of the web app, you can see topics that occur together more than expected colored in blue and topics that occur together less than expected colored in red. Having this kind of overview can enable you to quickly identify which clusters you can internally link together in order to create a more coherent story with your internal link strategy. If your dataset also has time series data, you can have a grouping by date as well. Now that we kind of know what to expect from all of the files that we're going to download, we can navigate to the download section and download all of the files which are already put in comma separated formats. The only one that I wanted to put a little caveat for is the doc topic graph file for Gephi. This requires additional software, but I will include a link in the description of the video on where to get that software from. And the final part of uh, this exercise is actually exploring the files in a little bit more user-friendly format and potentially integrating them into your deliverable. Now I have created uh, this sheet template and hopefully that will be a little bit more useful for you when you're trying to understand the data that you're dealing with. So um, it involves um, four different tabs, with the first one being mainly instructions about how to use uh, this sheets template. Uh, and it also kind of covers uh, things that we have already discussed in the video. Um, it has uh, a couple of different uh, related resources attached just to kind of help you in case you ever get stuck um, with doing this uh, exercise at all. Yeah, so essentially we have uh, the, the keys um, section. Now looking at the exports that we have from the web-based topic modeling app, the keys are actually the topic word export. Now you would paste this uh, just as you see it um, in the document. Next, we have uh, the topic to topic similarity. Now, I have instructions here about how to paste it, but essentially these two, um, once you put the keys in, these two sections of this sheet are going to be automatically filled um, with, with your data. The only thing that you have to copy is actually the scores of the topic to topic similarity. And the document that you're going to copy this for is topic to topic connections from the web app export. And finally, one of the most important things is the document topics. Now, again, like in the other two, two sheets, the, these cells here that are in gray, they're going to be automatically filled based on the in input that you provide in sheet number one, which is organize your data, and sheet number two, which is keys. The document topics values are actually going to be something that you copy from the document topics export from the web app. I hope this was super useful for you. I cannot wait to see how you use it and tell me if you think the export was good enough for your site or you think it was just not good enough and how you have improved it. And I just want to take a quick pause here and uh, just prompt you to look at what you have achieved. You saved a ton of time. This exercise has taken you no more than 30 minutes. You also uh, have a baseline overview of uh, the main topic clusters and their relationship. You also tested something new. So it's important to scrutinize the output and tell your client how you have improved it or if it was good enough, congrats.